Welcome to Optimizing the Human Weapon System, better known as OHWS. This education brief will provide a foundation for your understanding on the capabilities, expectations, and data flows with the human performance ecosystem. I'll be followed by Dr. Brandon Marcello and Dr. Kerry McKenzie as part of this education brief. If anyone has ever had a blister on their hand that then turns into a callus, then the concept of stimulus and response should be very familiar. In this example, there was a stimulus or some type of friction that broke the skin or nearly broke the skin. As a result, there was a response by the body. Make the skin thicker in that exact same place so the skin won't break anymore. Now training and how we handle training is based on that same stimulus and response concept or stress and coping concept. In other words, how do we manage stress? And when I say stress, I don't necessarily mean a stressful event such as losing a job or getting a divorce, for instance. While those certainly count as stress, so does physical activity, high pressure situations, conflict with a friend, family member, or counterpart. Not getting enough sleep and not maintaining proper hydration are also types of stress. And all of these things deliver some sort of consequence. So, what are our coping abilities to handle these and offload that stress? Well, I mentioned hydration and sleep. Those certainly help offload stress. Healthy nutrition helps offload stress. Sometimes going for a walk or run or even going out to have a beer with colleagues can help offload stress. Now, there are a number of reasons why any of us may not be able to effectively manage or offload stress. And in the short term, there are really few consequences to doing so. However, thinking long-term, long-term performance, chronic stress, long-term stress coming from anywhere will negatively impact our performance and will show up in one or more of the domains of human performance. So it might show up cognitively, physically, socially, emotionally, or all of them. And this is where the OHWS program steps in. OHWS leverages the innovation in the commercial health and wellness sectors that has offered us unprecedented opportunity to monitor and measure human performance physiological parameters, not only in a non-intrusive manner, but near continuous 24 hour cycle. We monitor behaviors, training, recovery, and wellness, both on and off duty to ensure the accurate depiction of readiness, not only of soldiers, but the formation itself. This will allow the U.S. Army to think, learn, and analyze essential human performance and wellness data in an operationally valid way. Insights from this effort will feed requirements for echelon-based data analysis, including functions such as holistic health and fitness, and identify the critical relationships that holistically quantify and qualify the human weapon system. I'll be followed by Dr. Brandon Marcello. While Joe gave a high level overview of the program, let's talk about what the program does for you, the soldier, and then we'll discuss what it does for the command and medical sides of the house. As a soldier, the effort will provide you valuable information about your physiology and give you clues to how well you're responding in a good way or a bad way to these daily stressors. Our hope is that you can course correct to ensure that you're performing at your best. Now the command and medical side will use this information to gain a better understanding of the physiological variables and stress to rest ratios associated with the successes and failures of training. This will allow them to make better informed decisions to the long range training calendar so that then they can learn and deploy the right training stimulus in the right amount at the right time to ensure that you're adapting your training, and you're in a position to perform your best. At the end of the day, you're getting feedback about your behaviors, habits, and choices. And how do these behaviors, habits, and choices affect physiology and performance? For example, what happens if I eat late, or eat a lot, or run too much, or have one drink versus three? or I don't stay hydrated throughout the day. I now have an opportunity to see how my behaviors, habits, and choices affect me 
and my performance as an individual. So let's talk about these wearable technologies that will be deployed to give you these better insights into your behaviors, habits, and choices. The first wearable device is called the Aura Ring. It's sized to fit either your ring finger, middle finger, or pointer finger. And this device provides you feedback about your sleep, quality of sleep, and your ability to offload stresses. The second piece of technology is the Polar Grit X Pro Watch. Now, as I mentioned earlier, physical activity is a stressor. So it's important that we track that. And this watch is used to track that activity during the day, such as lifting or running, rucking, PT, or anything like that. Now, what's likely coming to mind right now is, well, with all this data being collected, who can see it and how will it be used? And these are all good thoughts. So with that, let me hand it over to Dr. Kerry McKenzie to discuss that very topic. So as Brandon said, we are collecting a bunch of data about your sleep and physical activity from the watch and the ring, but we will also be collecting data from you and presenting data to you through an app called Smartabase. This app abrogate, aggregates your wearable data and data from user input forms that we will have you fill out each day. This form will ask you how you are feeling that day and if you're on duty or on leave. And the app will present summaries of all your data back to you through dashboards, which we will go over later. We also want you to know right from the start that it is our intent to protect your data while, and while others will be able to see your data, it will not be directly associated with you or your name unless they are in certain practitioner positions. One of the first ways we are going to do this is by assigning you a number and specific project staff, brigade, or H2F duty positions will have different levels of access to your data. This table gives an overview of that access. In the first column under data type, you can see the different types of data or information we'll be collecting. The first type is individual data. You can see that you are able to see this data in your dashboard on your Smartabase app. The medical staff and the H2F staff are also able to see individual based data in Smartabase. And then you can see that your command cannot see this individual for information, but the project staff can. Then there's de-identified aggregated data. This is pooled data from all the soldiers in the project to create echelon-based summary information. What you'll notice here is that everyone can see this kind of data. This data cannot be related back to any one participant and instead back to company, battalion, or brigade. And the last type is identified individual information. This is who has CAC-enabled access. This type of access allows certain duty positions to log into a secure website that will have identifiable data. The only people that have access to this are certain medical duty positions within the brigade, like the brigade surgeon and battalion meadows, certain H2F staff and certain project staff. The only reason the medical staff has this information is to be able to identify soldiers that may be showing health risks, that may require medical attention. The H2F staff have access to input workout information and see how programming is impacting your physiology. And the project staff have access in case we need to help with any project related issues like your ring or watch stops working or you get logged out of your devices. This is a lot of information to understand. So if you have questions, please talk to AJ when you continue through the onboarding process. So next I'm gonna go over how some of our Smartabase dashboards work. Basically, we are trying to give you information about yourself that you can think of being like a dashboard in your car. Here you have dials that show information about how your car is running, like what speed you're going and how much fuel you have left. And even if there's something going wrong that you might need to get checked out. Similarly, we can use the data from your wearable devices to track how your body and mind are functioning. We have dials to tell you how much sleep you've gotten, how hard of a workout you did yesterday, and how much gas you may have left in the tank, or how well you were recovered based on combining all of this information. And we can use this information to look for trends that may indicate you're getting sick or not recovering well. When we aggregate this information, we can see if certain companies or battalion are less recovered on average than others. And this will help leadership know if the training calendar needs to be adjusted to ensure you all are functioning at your best. Next, I'm going to go through an example of how an indicator light may be triggered within this project. In your car, you get a check engine light because the computer in your car has detected some sort of error. In Smartabase, we can track your overnight body temperature from the aura ring. And if your body temperature changes more than two degrees off your baseline, Smartabase throws up a flag that is like this check engine light. On your individual dashboard, you will see 
that you have a body temperature warning and the battalion meadow will get an automated alert that says participant number 1000 has a health risk alert. Now with your car, when this happens, you bring it to a mechanic, they run diagnostics, figure out what the problem is, and you can get an estimate and course of action. And either does the repair or gets you back on the road. Within OHWS, it looks like this. After you are alerted, you can decide to do what you would normally do when you notice you're getting sick. Contact your first line supervisor and then figure out with them if you need to go to sick call. Once there, you're evaluated and either get additional care or return to duty. What also happens in this case is that when the Meadow gets this alert, they're able to re-identify you with their CAC access. They contact your senior company medic who will perform a wellness check. From there, it is up to you and the company medic to decide if you need to report to sick call or just go back to duty. Again, if you have any questions about this process, just ask AJ or myself. So with that, you are able, probably thinking about some other myths that are associated with OHWS that you may have heard and probably have a few more questions. So I'm going to hand this over to Joe to handle that piece. Now we will discuss some of the myths that surround the OHWS program. Can you be referred to the Alcohol Substance Abuse Program because of the ring? No. The researchers nor your command will understand your choice when it comes to alcohol and whether or not there's a problem, which then feeds the idea that you may or may not get chaptered because of this data. No, we are just trying to allow the ability for the Army to think, learn, and analyze essential human performance and wellness data in an operationally valid way. Your choices allow us to understand the ebbs and flows of readiness. Are we going to track where you're at? Absolutely not. Will we listen to what you have to say? No, not from a ring. We'll ask you questions. We want to hear your thoughts. This part of the education brief is all about questions and answers that we can give you regarding some of the things we've learned over the years. Do you need to wear both devices if they do the same thing? They don't do the same thing very well, so therefore, yes, you do. Where the ring is really good at understanding nighttime physiology, the watch is really good at training load and what happens during the day. If you already know you're unhealthy, why do you need the device to tell you that? The more you can understand about your behaviors, habits, and choices, the more you can actually then intervene on yourself, which has the biggest benefit to have longevity of career and longevity of life. Can these devices tell exactly what you're doing? No, no, they can't. That was uh, part of the myth section and it's not even remotely close to giving the context around your choices and what you're doing at any given time. I'll be followed by Dr. Carrie McKenzie. Now I'm going to go through a few frequently asked questions about what this project will involve. And you may be saying to yourself, I was told to come here. Do I have to do this? And the answer is no, you don't. This is voluntary, but we hope to get as much participation as possible because we think it will help you be a better soldier and human and ultimately make the Army better. And really our goal is to get the entire brigade to participate. Because the more information we have across the brigade, the better we can understand how to use this type of program to increase brigade readiness. Some of you may also have a wearable device that you like to use and wondering if you can still use that device. And the answer is yes. If you're already using an Aura Ring, some Polar or Garmin watches or an Apple iWatch, these are devices that OHWS currently supports. If you have others, you can feel free to still use them as well as the devices that we give you. And if anything, you may find some things that you like about the new watch or your old watch. And one thing I know all of you are thinking about is that these devices sound expensive. Am I going to be financially responsible for these devices? And the answer is a big, bold underline, no. You will not sign for these devices. And if you break them or lose them, all you need to do is contact AJ and he will give you a replacement. But if you continue to break or lose devices, we may not continue to give you replacements. So just try to take care of them, but you will get replacements if you accidentally break or lose them. And then again, you may be wondering, how long is this project? Well, currently we are aimed to run through the end of September, 2024. And then you may be saying, well, then when does my participation begin? And the answer is right after you get your wearables today. And it ends if you leave second brigade between now and the end of the project, or if you decide that you don't want to participate anymore. So then you may be asking, well, if I leave the brigade or the project ends, do I get to keep my ring or watch? And the answer is it depends. If you're in the project for over a year and leave the brigade, you can keep your device. If you leave 
Prior to that, we will ask you to, to return the device. But again, you're not respons responsible for these devices. So if you don't get it back to us, you won't be punished, but we will ask for it. Okay, so then the question becomes, what are you actually asking me to do every day? And the first thing is to wear your watch and ring as much as possible and sync your watch and ring with your phone each day. We are also gonna ask you to fill out that daily check-in form. And we may also ask for you your feedback about your likes and dislikes of the program. We'll also hold monthly program audits to make sure that the devices are running properly and make sure you don't have any problems with the devices. And you're like, okay, well, that sounds like it could take some time and I have a normal job and life to do. How long will this take each day? So each day we expect that the daily check-in form will take a couple minutes and that the device sync will also take a couple minutes. The program audits, audits, like I said, will only happen once a month and those will be arranged with your battalion leadership, so they should give you time to do those. Okay, a couple more things. What are the risks for this project? And the biggest one is that you may find these devices uncomfortable. If that is the case, please let AJ know and he will make sure the ring is sized properly and your watch is on correctly. Also, we don't want you to wear the ring or watch when you think it could cause injury to yourself or others. So if you have a job where you would normally not wear a ring, do not wear this ring. These are not breakaway rings. And we went over this earlier, but again, our goal here is to protect your data. All the data we collect will have that de-identified code associated with it and your name will not be attached to it. And like I said earlier, there are only a few people like myself, AJ, the Battalion Meadow, and the H2F staff that will have access to that um, CAC-enabled website where they will be able to identify you. So when we have the results, who is going to see them? Our plan is to share the results with the project sponsor, your brigade leadership, H2F staff, and you. But again, none of this data is going to have your name anywhere on those results. So with that, I'm gonna hand this off to Joe to close things out. So what's the big takeaway for OHWS? We hope that it enables you to be smarter, faster, more lethal and precise as warfighters in a formation that in turn enables enhanced career durability and resilience impacting your total quality of life. Our goal is so that you can understand your behaviors, habits and choices and how that impacts your physiology. Human performance allows you and the formation to stack the odds in your favor of a successful outcome, thus enabling an unprecedented look at readiness. Thank you for your time, and you will not be financially liable for any of the devices that will be issued to you as part of the program. Thank you.